Good evening. It is bourbonblog.com. I'm talking with my good friend here, Brian Smith, master distiller for hard truth. They've just released the Sweet Mash Rye the last couple of weeks. And I tell you, Brian, people are loving this. I love this. Tell us about what is the Sweet Mash Rye? Hey, thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. You know, <clears throat> you and I have done quite a few of these together, and yeah. um, I've, I'm always proud of everything um, that leaves our distillery that we bring out to the market. But, you know, really, I think in probably every one of our, our discussions for whatever product, um, I've always said something about, you know, and, you know, soon, you know, as soon as it's ready, we're going to be releasing our own, our own whiskey. So, you know, we, we've, we built this distillery and, and, and got it operational at the end of 2018. Um, we've been producing all of our rums and our gins and our vodkas here. Um, and then at the old distillery before that. Um, but this really is our first whiskey that's a hundred percent you know, our juice, you know, we use our farmers for the grain. Uh, it's mashed, fermented, distilled, aged on the property in our Rick house here on 325 acres. So, um, you know, you only get a ch you only get one shot to uh, release your first whiskey. And uh, I'm really excited. So this is a, a mash bill one of our rye whiskeys. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. Straight, Number straight one. rye whiskey and 100 yep. percent sweet mash, baby. 100% sweet mash, and yeah. it uh, it makes a, a big difference in the final product. Uh, I know for a number of the viewers, they probably have tried some of the other sweet mashers. There's only a, a few in the whole country that are doing this. You decided that you wanted to be one of them. What led to that decision, and, and how do you think it makes a, a difference in the whiskey? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I... I... <clears throat> I really wasn't all that familiar with sweet mash whiskeys, to be honest with you. And because it, it truly, while, you know, every distillery, anytime that they, you know, restart their systems, they do one batch of sweet mash because they typically don't have back set to put in. Um, but really it was whenever I met um, Shane uh, and Pat at Wilderness Trail, um, spent some time with them ahead of us designing and building this distillery and, uh, <clears throat> you know, they were, <clears throat> they're big proponents of sweet mash. They're one of the first ones that really ran with that. Um, and I remember very, very well that afternoon in their Rick house, tasting a two and a half year old rye whiskey that I just, just blew my mind. I mean, um, you know, part of my philosophy, whenever I'm, I'm making any product is I want, you know, I want complexity and balance and and uh and real richness and flavor um and then above all of course quality and so right. you know when i tasted their first sweet mash rye whiskey i was just all those things were there the quality was incredible um and for a two and a half year old whiskey there were no off flavors at all um, but that depth and that and that that complexity and that you know you know whenever you taste a whiskey and it just kind of keeps it keeps uh developing on your palate yeah. as you go uh blew me away so Right then and there, um, I knew we needed to do some more research on the sweet mash thing, and uh, and the rest is history. You, you knew it was the way to go, and I can tell you just from tasting this uh, for several days, I've been sipping on this. This is just it's it's bold, it's fresh, it has spice, it has fruit. Uh, as I as I had written, um, you know everything from that French cognac, this beautiful cognac nature. Maybe a touch of I get Calvados on this too because mm -hmm. of the apples, this wonderful elegance, but yet this boldness, this spice. I think it, it's you know I know it's rye, but yeah. it also kind of has this like on its own category sort of spirit. Yeah, is that what you were going for? You know, whenever uh, we the first two distillations of this this mash bill. Um, I, I use two different yeast. I use, you know, two different yeast strains, one for each right. of the distillations. Um, because I, you know, I knew they were, they were great yeast strains, but I wanted to see what they would do with this. So it's a 94% rye, 6% malted barley. So there's no corn in this at all. So all that sweetness is coming from the, the malt grain and the interaction <clears throat> with the, uh, with the yeast and the barrel. And, um, but there was one yeast strain that we used that, that really, um, the new make that came off the still had this really like big burst of almost tropical fruit on the front end. And I thought, wow, that's, that's uh 
that's interesting because you don't usually um, expect that with a with a rye whiskey, especially one with no corn in it. Um, and so, in my mind, as I'm as I'm thinking through, you know, what this is going to taste like down the road, I'm you know I'm seeing all this big bright fruit forward, and then you know matching with the barrel sugars and eventually the uh, the spice from the rye. And um, I, I'm just I'm really really pleased with the way that this turned out. Really excited. Everything's come together really magically. And I tell you, I'm sipping this at 115.2 mm-hmm. proof. Um, this is just, I mean, it, it, though I know it's warm, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't drink quite that high. I mean, there, it, there's a nice warm note to it, but it, it drinks a lot lower. It is right from the barrel. It's something that doesn't feel like it knocks you over. It's, it's bold, but it's just, it's very approachable. I would say it's very sessionable. This is something that at, the more I'm drinking it, the more I'm getting on it. Um, it, it just ticks off a lot of those, those checkmark boxes of what is a really good whiskey supposed to be. And in many ways, I think, you know, a good whiskey, every time I come back to it, I want to experience something new. And I, and I really do with this. Uh, what, 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 did you, what was the, the thought behind this? Then it, it, but part of it was the sweet mash. It was the yeast. It yeah. was... It was waiting for that right time. How did you go about the rest of it, finishing it off? Yeah, thank you. So the, um, you know, really that softer mouthfeel at that high barrel proof, um, mm. you know, and actually <clears throat> we, we go into the barrel at a fairly low proof. Um, okay. You know, the, the first six months to a year of our, of our first distillation cycles on our system, you know, we were really kind of bouncing out, you um, what our yields were going to be and, and increasing, increasing our efficiency. So, uh, but, but we like to go in the barrel at around between 110 and 115 proof. Um, just so happened that this, this batch of barrels ended up being on, on the high end of that range. Um, but even, even the, at 115 proof, I, I think that that sweet mash um, technique really helps to create a softer mouthfeel. And, and, you know, we haven't talked about it yet. I know you've, you've got a, a really educated, uh, a fan base that, that watches you, but just for people that, that don't know what sweet mashing is versus sour mashing right. is, um, you know, we don't, with a sour mash technique that was developed where you would take um, some, some leftovers from your, your previous distillation and put them into the cook of the new distillation. Now, some people have confused it to being like um, sourdough mother, you know, like a sourdough mother when you're making sourdough bread. Uh, but it's really not like that because you're not putting in, uh, you know, the back set that goes in for sour mashing isn't live yeast and mash. It's actually the waste that comes off of your still. So it's been cooked at 200 plus degrees. Um, so there's nothing living in it. <clears throat> but what the sour mashing does is it helps to set the next fermentation uh, and lower the pH. So when you lower the pH of the fermentation, it helps to protect the yeast um, from any kind of bacterial contamination. So that was really important back in the day when, you know, there wasn't a lot of ability to be as sanitary as we're able to be now. Um, Coming from a beer background, you know, when we developed the system, um, we, we we really created everything to be able to be steamed out, pasteurized, and everything stainless steel. So what that allows us to do, you know, the extra expense that we put in to build that into the system, uh, which was a lot more expensive. Um, but but what that allows us to do is the flexibility for every new mash has completely new water, you know, fresh water, fresh grains, fresh yeast every single time. Um, our grain supply and our yeast supply are so consistent. We don't have to worry about consistency issues uh, between batches. Um, but what that does is, is not putting that stillage waste into the mash for the cook and i mean people are using up to like 25 30 percent of the total total capacity um for me sour mashing has a tendency to um to it it can mute flavors um with sweet mash if you do it correctly and you don't get the off flavors you get this big you know uh celebration of the grain um which i think is is where you're getting all that big deep complexity in a younger whiskey and a softer mouthfeel Excellent. And it does a lot to the flavor. And of course, um, there's so many great whiskeys out there that are, that are doing sour mash, but, uh, sure. considering yeah. that, uh, you know, Some of favorites. Yeah, of course. Three incredible distilleries, you along yeah. with, uh, Wilderness Trail, Peerless and Hard Truth. 
-hmm. these being the only ones we really know of that are doing uh, just all wonderful whiskeys. And this being the newest release, people are getting excited about this. Do you think that this is going to inspire um, a few other distilleries to start doing more sweet mash, just tasting this? You know, I, I really do. Um, right around when we when we you know were getting ramped up here, I started to see some pretty big press outlets. You know, Forbes. There's an article in Forbes about sweet mash. Um, you know, some some of the the people that talk about whiskey out there were were discussing you know this this rise of a, of a new sweet mash. So really, I I feel really. Um, I feel really happy about the company that we're in and really right. proud um, of, 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 you know, the other distillers that are doing sweet mash. And I think there are a few others out there. Um, but I, I think we're on the forefront of a new wave of, of uh, whiskey making that, you know, stays true to tradition. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes people go way off, off on a tangent with a, a new style of whiskey. This isn't that, I mean, this is, you know, you're still drinking really, really traditional uh, uh, bourbon and rye whiskey. But with that sweet mashing, um, you know, you, you, you really get a different angle on it. And uh, if you, if you read, you know, we're, this is our first release, but, but really if you read a lot of the tasting notes and some of the, the comments and, um, and ratings that have come out of some of the other sweet mash distilleries, you'll see a lot of that, you know, celebration of the complexity and the balance and the, and the, uh, the amazing um, flavors that came out from the technique. And, 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 and incredible also, so well said, so gentle on the mouthfeel, not overpowering at this proof, but so much complexity, so much mouthfeel. There's uh, so much a deeper texture on this too than you would expect right. on yeah. most whiskeys. From, from here out, I mean, of course, you've had some wonderful releases as we mentioned with the smoked barrel, the sipes, Oh, yeah. uh, everything you all have done from from here out all the whiskeys that you make are you are you going to stick with the sweet mash style are you going to mix it up a little bit what are you what do you, you know of... i'd never say never I'll, i you know i i don't i don't dislike uh sour mash whiskey but right. but really you know we here at hard truth we we have such a a breadth of of things that we do so um, for people that aren't familiar, you know, we've got 325 acres here in uh, Brown County, Indiana, a uh, big tourism uh, hub here on our property. You can come here and do, you know, any kind of tour you want. We've got a big restaurant, a music, uh, uh, some terrace area below out in the woods where we do a lot of uh, live music. Um, we do a lot of stuff here. Um, and, you know, with our rums and our gins and, of course, the toast coconut rum, and now we just released maple bourbon cream just yeah. before the sweet mash, which is has been uh, doing really well. So we do a lot of things um, that that are kind of you know encompass a lot of different world of of um, spirits and and spirits tourism. You know, with this with our whiskey though uh, that we're producing, um, I really wanted to hone in on something and do it. You know, my, my favorite thing about anything, if you go out to eat or, or get something to drink, is I you know I, I want to taste something with someone that really, you know, does one thing and does it really, really well. So um, with our own whiskeys that we're making here, Sweet Mash is, is, is how we're going to go. It's how you're going to go. We'll be seeing some other, and I, I'm including the website up again for those of you all, I think a lot of you all have heard of Hard Truth, but if you haven't, check out the website, check out everything they do. I mean, it's so many things, rums, gins, vodkas, uh, so many interesting products and all very unique, uh, so well done. Um, Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, what other whiskeys uh, can we look forward to? Again, we should also probably ask while well, we have, I see a lot of people talking about how much they're looking forward to getting a bottle. First of all, where can this be found? Uh, how much is it? Is there much out there? Sure. So this is batch. I've got a bottle here as yeah. well. So this is, uh, this is batch one and oh, there we go. Batch one and, uh, 30 barrels for this batch um, was dumped on October 14th, came from our first rack house, which we're, we're on the way to building our second one, um, breaking ground on that this spring. Um, right. Our current current households maximum capacity is about 4,000 barrels. And the, the we're going to be building a traditional rick house um, breaking ground this spring. That's going to be an 18,000 barrel rick house. So, um, you know, if you've ever been in Kentucky and seen any of those great rick houses down there, it's it's uh, it's going to be uh, the same as that. So, 
with this product that, or this particular batch, we've got it in, let's see, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, um, and Florida to start. Very limited distribution. Um, the places where it has landed so far, it's going really quick. I think there's you know only a handful of cases left of batch one. Um, and then batch two will be right behind it. Um, and also the one thing I wanted to point out is, you know, with, so this is our, our custom bottle, but this is a uh, bash bill one you see right there. Right. So I've actually, we've got four different mash bills of rye and four different mash bills of bourbon. So this is just mash bill one. Um, I love this mash bill. Nine, like I said, 94% rye, 6% malted barley. Um, but the other three main mash bills for our rye whiskey are very different. Um, you know, I one of them has a good percentage of corn, a little kind of more traditional um, rye mash bill that people are, are used to tasting. Um, a lot of them that come out of Kentucky. Um, right. But then <clears throat> got a couple mash bills where we've we've uh, we've innovated with some interesting um, alternate grains that bring some different flavors. So, you know, I, I like to I like to have you know, a, a lot of choices for people. Um, so, you know, if you're a, if you're a big, bold rye guy and you like that 90 plus percent rye, we've got something for you. But if you want something with a little bit more corn sweetness, um, we're going to have that as well. Um, so this is Mash Bill 1. Uh, we, we plan on, on releasing that throughout 2022. Um, and, uh, and then I might have a, um, a limited, um, offering a couple of the other mash bills as, as long as the the barrels come around like I want them to this year we will uh, we'll release those as well so I, re I remember when we were there we were back in July the uh, yeah. the Indiana rye whiskey just became its own category and I know you yeah. hard truth and a number of other distilleries had a lot to do with that in the state of Indiana again uh, only the second state to have their own rye whiskey uh, category officially recognized right. by uh, the state, the government, uh, New York being the other, the first, the Empire Rye. So we were celebrating that, and you 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 tasted me on some of these barrels still aging at the time, and right. then you started you you were talking about having several different mash bills. Those right. will be coming um, in future releases now. As different releases are rolled out, are the are the different mash bills going to be something that will be uh, available ongoing or more just on an annual basis? How will that look? You, you know, it's it's funny. You always you always wonder whether you're making enough of something, and <laughs> and you don't really know until the market uh, tells you you right, are. Right. right. <clears throat> you know, we've got a pretty decent sized distillery here. We're we're we've got the capacity to to produce about twenty two hundred barrels a year. Um, but in the world of whiskey, as you know, when you when you when you when you start releasing, you know, cask strength, um, real deal sweet mash whiskey, it goes fast. So my uh, my 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 intuition tells me that that these you know these whiskeys when they hit, they're gonna they're gonna be um, they're gonna go pretty quickly, um, and I uh, I'm really excited about that. So so yeah, like I said, we'll have probably three or four more batches of, of mash bill one, um, throughout 2022. And, uh, and then the other, the other mash bills, we'll just see how they, how they come around. But I, I would, I would guess that, that towards the end of the year, we'll have a couple of smaller offerings of the other ones. Some smaller offerings, some more limited editions. Um, everything you're doing is delicious. Again, it to be such a young distillery and to do all that you all have done. Uh, this is uh, is phenomenal with the numbers of number of releases you've done. This being the very first uh, 100 whiskey that you've created. Everything else before has been so interesting, and this is so unique. And again, it is uh, mash mash bill one, batch one. Others yeah. coming soon. If for some reason you're watching this later, or you um, or you couldn't find this one, uh, be watching for it again. This is out in Indiana, Kentucky, and Florida now, right? Yep, and uh, Tennessee as well, and, and Tennessee, Illinois, yeah, and Illinois, so, yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I'm. We are just so fortunate. We've we've just had. Uh, we've got such an incredible team here that um, yeah. both makes the whiskey and you know does barrel evaluations and um, I, I just I've been blown away with with the. Uh, the talent that, that we've been able to, to attract and keep. And, um, you know, it's, it, 
it takes a lot of people to uh, to pull this kind of stuff off, and and I think we've got the best in the industry. Yeah, no, you you really do. You're, you're you're very talented, Brian. You and your team are, and you're going to be a lot of places. It sounds like coming yeah. up. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you next week. I know you're going to be uh, stopping by uh, the Evansville Bourbon Society and a number of other places. Where else can people be finding you as you're as you get back on the road? Any other places? Sure. Yeah, we're going to be, I'm going to be spending a, a good amount of time in the next couple of months in Kentucky and Illinois um, with this, the sweet mash. You know, it's f- from a producer who's, you know, the, the fact that we, that we distill so many different kinds of products, uh, you know, spirits and that we've right. really gotten known, you know, pretty, pretty well known for specifically our toasted coconut rum and our cinnamon vodka which are more in the cordials, uh, you know, sweeter category yeah. of spirits. Um, and it's, it's rare that a, that a distillery, you know, does a little bit of both or, or, or a lot of both. Um, so, you know, I'm finding that now that we've released this whiskey, you know, I'm getting a lot of, um, I'm getting a lot of demand and calls from um, bars and restaurants and, and retailers and, and people who, who maybe, you know, the, our previous, products maybe weren't a fit for them, but now they're really interested in our, in our, um, in our cask strength whiskeys. Um, and so I'm going to be spending a lot of time, uh, down in Kentucky, up in the Chicagoland area and throughout Indiana, um, really supporting this sweet mashed rye whiskey. And, and, you know, I know that you and I talked about our maple bourbon cream, but yes. so far that one has been our, our biggest release. It's, you know, and it's kind of fun one because that, that crosses over between the, between the cordial and the whiskey drinker, right? right? So, oh, it's so good. I mean, there are people that I talk to that whether it's the sweet, the maple bourbon cream, yeah, uh, even from the beginning, the cinnamon vodka. I told you, you know, I don't drink much vodka, I love it with a cigar. I think it goes in new places that yeah. no other vodka for me had gone into. Um, but I hear it from many other enthusiasts too. They, they're excited about every part of what you're doing because you've just done everything so well. Well, man, it's just fun. If it wasn't fun, it, it would, it would, uh, we wouldn't be, I don't think we would be doing so fun. <laughs> you know, well, it's a, it's a, it's a kick in the pants, man. We have a good time doing this stuff. So it's going to be fun next, uh, next couple months. I'm going to be out in the market a lot, um, you know, visiting with, uh, retailers and bars and restaurants and, and, uh, sampling people on the sweet mash rye. And, um, you know, we've, we've, like I said, it, it just opens up a whole new world to us. Um, from a market perspective, uh, once you start releasing cask strength whiskey. Yes. Yes. Obviously yeah. delicious, delicious by itself. Yeah. You even have this, I, even the bottle. So it's such a specialty bottle distilled with the finest grains. I mean, this is who, who did the bottle for you? you so, you yeah, we, we worked with a, a designer out of, um, out of St. Louis, so area, beautiful. Dave Scott, super talented guy. Um, Dave and I have, have, uh, have had a lot of fun over the last few years doing um label and and bottle designs and uh you know sometimes i'll have something crazy in my head and i'll scribble down something that looks ridiculous and and i'll give it to dave and and you know he brings me back something that's you know at least 50 fold better than than what i originally but one of the one of the the most fun parts well first of all the you know the bottle shape's totally unique and it's kind of you know it's got it's got uh yeah, so it's it's kind of organic and and right. plating. It's, there's nothing really, and but then the cork is is uh, my favorite, one of my favorite parts. Yes, so it's, I love that's it. the raw bark edge of the cork tree. Um, so each cork is completely unique and different, um, which is kind of fun. So that I, is I, the bark edge. I mean, it has this. It almost looks like it's like been burnt a little bit, but it's just that raw edge. That it is. It, yeah, yeah. It makes so it, the packaging, um, packaging was really fun on that one and. And uh, yeah. I, I I thought it was fun. Dave Dave might <laughs> I know I drove him crazy on it over and over, but <laughs> but, uh, but you know that's all part of it. You gotta if, if you really care about something, you gotta get it right. From the packaging to the the, the liquid itself, again, it is it is one of the most exciting releases uh, that we've talked about here in a long time, oh, and so you. unique. Again, a blend of elegance, the the, the fruit. Uh, it tastes uh, to me. It tastes a lot older than it is. I mean, I think what matters is the flavor, no matter what. But again, these were whiskeys that were all two to three and a half or so. Yeah, two. So t- just between two and a half and just over three years old. Um, and so, you know, as we move forward with these releases, the the 
you know, our, our stock of barrels are going to continue to get older. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure where our end point is going to be with this mash bill. Uh, what I really like about it is, is you know, it's, there are some whiskeys that really need that time in the barrel um, to, to, to subtract um, off flavors um, through, you know, the barrel aging process. What I love about this particular whiskey is, is that, you know, you, you've got this such a big, bright fruit. Um, I, 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 for me, it's like a ripe orchard fruit. So whether it's, you know, know, apricots or peach, I've heard someone say peach, um, Steve Coombs, you know, he he was talking about, he got a lot of peach notes. Um, you know, you picking up the Calvados, the apples that those ripe orchard fruits, um, really at the fore. And then what I love about this particular batch is, um, you know, its interaction with the barrel, it doesn't move into that real tannic oaky um, stage. It's really, but but I get almost like, um, I get some custard notes, some, oh, yeah. you know, some vanilla. Mm. It's got a really nice mouthfeel for nice creaminess. two and a half to three years old, which I really like creaminess and that, that, that part of whiskey. Um, so again, it's, I'm excited to, 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 you know, kind of watch this whiskey get a little bit older and see, you know, after once we come out of the cold and into the warmer weather again, um, see what those barrels have done um, to this whiskey. And, and then, you know, as soon as, as soon as it, it, you know, we kind of lock in where that end point is going to be in the future, then, then we'll, uh, we'll keep that pretty consistent moving forward. Yeah. So, so many beautiful notes and I can't wait to try future releases, but to come out the, out of the gate with this two and a half, three and a half years old, such beautiful flavor. It tastes, I, I I don't know if I would say six or seven, maybe at least twice as old as it is to right. have that depth, that, uh, that complexity on it already is, is something else. So, uh, I would, I don't know if I had to guess this, I might say seven. It's, it has so much going on. It really does. You've done Thank so you. well with this. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, my friend. And always, Always good to have you on here. And again, we've been tasting with uh, Hard Truth uh, Distilling Company's uh, master distiller, Brian Smith, the looking for the Sweet Mash Rye, Batch 1, or um, future batches batches um, as we go along. And just look for everything uh, Hard Truth does. Yeah, uh, and you know, we're also making a lot of Sweet Mash bourbon whiskey right now, yeah. too, Tom. So you it's, got it's that laying great. down now, huh? How, how old is what you have in the stuff. barrel there? The uh, so the oldest we have is right at three years. Um, and it's just, I mean, it, it's, it's outstanding, but I'm, I'm, I really, you know, one thing that, that you know about me and that, that our, you know, we have as philosophy here at the distillery and, you know, is we really are not going to release anything until we are absolutely, um, you know, it, it reaches the top of the quality for us and the bourbon tastes amazing. Um, but I know based on the potential with this rye, I know what that bourbon um, has in store oh, for it. So we're going to, we're going to leave it in there until it's ready. But, uh, but, you know, look for, so we'll, we'll keep the same bottle. This is, you know, we've, we've kind of locked in our, our, our bottle, um, you know, uh, profile for our whiskeys, for our sweet mash whiskeys. So, you know, we'll keep this bottle and you just have to look on, look for the different mash bills and, and between the rise and the bourbons that are going to come out. Excellent. Uh, should we talk briefly about the Sweet Mash Pioneer Society? Sure. Yeah. So we, yeah. we, we, um, you know, when we we first decided that we were going to make uh, Sweet Mash whiskey, <clears throat> and we um, were putting in the stills and the uh, and the equipment, we opened up actually opened up the tour center first here at Hard Truth Distilling Company right. here in Nashville. Um, and then the restaurant second, and then the distillery really came on third because, you know, it takes a lot of workings to get, get all that, you know, the system hooked up. Um, and so we were giving tours while the distillery was being built. And what we found is, is we had a lot of people who, who were big fans of ours from our other products. Um, and they really wanted to be, uh, have a deeper relationship, a little bigger part of what we were doing. So we, we decided to. Um, basically you can sign up to be a sweet mash pioneers. If you go to heartroothdistilling.com, there's a place where you can sign up. 
we don't bombard you with a bunch of uh, weird stuff. I mean, we just send updates out um, as to what's going on here at the distillery, future releases, so you can be up to date on what's going on um, to be a member of Sweet Mash Pioneers. Um, but also, we um, started to pre-sell the whiskey, so um, you could you could be you know sign up and sp spend some money and be the first ones when we first released our whiskey. So uh, we had a nice uh, reception for our folks who um, were the first ones to pre-buy the rye whiskey. Um, and so they got to come and they were the first ones to have bottles and we had a nice reception and, and a lot of uh, sampling and it was a, it was a fun evening. So, you know, we've, we've got a lot of different ways you can engage with us. One thing that we, we noticed here is that, you know, as we were looking for our tour um, engagement and how people engage with distilleries in Kentucky is, you know, it's changed somewhat now, but they, they always had so many constraints um, on, you know, what you could drink, how much you could drink, if you could right. drink it all on the distillery property. Um, and those were constraints that we did not have here in Indiana as, you know, um, so when you, when you come to Hard Truth Distilling Company here in Nashville, we've got distillery tours, we've got tours where you can, um, we've just got a new tour, Tom, that you got to come check out where, so this is, I forgot to tell you about this. So let's see. Yeah. Single barrel experience tour. Wow. Now think about how many, you know, chances you've probably had or people that are in the industry to go to a distillery and to pick a single barrel. I mean, it's right. just a cool experience. Yes. It's really unique. Um, but, you know, it's, there's really the barrier to entry. Not many people get to do it. I mean, unless you're in a restaurant or bar or a retailer where you can um, afford to buy an entire barrel of whiskey and sell it. Um, most people right. don't have a chance to do it. So right. we offer a new experience that just got online where you can, it's, you sign up for it to, or you, you reserve it on our tour site on heartruthdistilling.com and you can come for a single barrel pick experience. So we've got single barrels down in our tour center and you actually go through a single big, a single barrel pick experience with wow. one of our tour guides. And then at the end you can buy I think as little as just one bottle or up to a full barrel, if you really want to. Um, and then we will do a little single barrel sticker with your information on it and stick it on the bottle. So it's a very, right. very cool experience. And um, so I guess my point is, you know, we're, we're trying to kind of blow up, you know, what, what people are used to with the engagement with distilleries and, and open it up to where, you know, people can have a little, little uh, deeper engagement with us. It's so that's so important what you're doing there, Brian, because it, it, it used to be that and it still is many places. You have to partner with a liquor store, a restaurant to have to be able to be an individual, not a not a property, not a hotel, restaurant, bar. But now you can actually um, do this new experience. And that's that's very exciting. So uh, yeah, yeah. I want I want to I want to come do that. I, I want yeah, uh, to come. I, I, I think I think you're due for a visit. <laughs> I'm going to be there. I'm yeah. going to be there soon. Hopefully be seeing you next week. Uh, we really appreciate you and the team there at, um, at Hard Truth. And again, uh, if you haven't been on a tour or experienced everything Hard Truth has to offer, go to that website. I'm so glad you all joined us for uh, Bourbon Blog Live and join us again. We'll be back for Cigar Saturday here in just a couple of days where we'll be celebrating a brand new release that uh, Sandra's doing at Sandra's there in uh, New Jersey. We'll probably even pair some of uh, some of this here in a couple of nights with the cigar on um, on Saturday. We'll also have this episode up on our podcast channel. There's the link. Make sure you're subscribed to that if you're not already. Brian, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. And you've noticed I poured a few sips of this because I just like it so damn much. So yeah, welcome. I love it. Thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate it. It's really <laughs> exciting. You know, like I said at the top of the show, it's. Everything we've been doing has led to, you know, releasing whiskey and, and you only get one shot to do it. And we're really super, super excited. And, and, and uh, thank you for giving me the, the chance to talk about it. Absolutely. Well done. Congratulations to you and the team. And we'll see you soon, my friend. Thanks, Tom.